All the ladies in New York are rejoicing because Andrew Cormo resigned today. But that's not exactly what we're talking about. We're going to talk about a little bit of New York politics, but mostly we're going to talk about real estate. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise, this Holt Wise TV. I work with you guys on this show. So if after the show you like what you see, you want me to make a personalized video for you, like I'm doing for my man Johnny, shoot my team an email, give us your phone number, we'll call you, we'll talk to you about it. Johnny, you came to me, brother, because you have a smaller budget, right? You're working with like around $20,000. And in New York... You can't be a real estate investor for that budget. And even if you could become a real estate investor for that budget, you don't want to because you're unhappy with the political situation in New York. You're unhappy with people like Andrew Cormo and what's his face? De Blasio. Those two some bitches don't even like each other, but they both hate landlords, right? Taking away rights moratoriums on this, on that, rent control, this or that, right? The climate in New York is something that's just been increasingly tough and difficult for real estate investors like you, real estate investors like Johnny, uh, to navigate, right? Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? I don't know. It's above my pay grade, not, uh, you know, not what I get paid to do. But what I do get paid to do is to help people like you, Johnny, find the markets that make sense for your wants, your needs, your goals, your budget, and your numbers. And that's exactly what I've done for you today, brother. I have a solid, solid, solid C-grade duplex in an area with reasonable landlord-tenant uh, <clears throat> laws, policies, no rent control, none of that jazz. And my team will be able to handle everything for you after the closing. Property management, maintenance, construction, insurance, title work, you name it, we do it. But before all that... I have to do the due diligence for you. I have to make sure you understand what you'll be getting yourself into. I have to give you the pros of the property, the pros of the neighborhood, but I also got to break down the cons, the numbers, the whole shebang. Let's get into that right after this. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini. Because this is America, that's why. Land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and start investing today. Welcome back. Let's dive into the property, okay? I got a lot to say about this one, right? Some good, some bad, but that's what y'all pay me to do, right? 3328 West 111th, Cleveland 44111. Hit the market four days ago, and it's priced perfectly, $100,000. I believe that there's absolutely going to be multiple offers on this. Don't think that there's not. Many investors are going to want to invest in this because the numbers just make sense. At 100 k what we have, two tenants, one paying 750 the other paying seven and a quarter, right? You break that down, fixed and variable expense estimates, you're looking at an NOI of 8196 on average, right? You traditionally finance that. You put down a quarter. Bank puts down three quarters. You're looking at a 17.2% cash on cash return. But that's not the end of the video. That's not the end of the analysis. Those are the numbers. That took a couple seconds to go through. But you guys need more than that from me. You want to get in depth, right? The numbers look great, but we can't make our purchase just based on the numbers. I don't care where you're from, right? A lot of those markets, you look at numbers like that, right? New York, California, right? You're like, oh, it's amazing. Bye, bye, bye. You can't do that, man. We have to break it all down first. Make sure you understand what you're getting yourselves into, right? As far as the neighborhood goes, okay? This is a C-grade neighborhood. Holton Wise, we got hundreds of duplexes in this neighborhood, right? 44111 on the west side of Cleveland. Solid, solid neighborhood. But what that means, right? When I say solid, it's a relative term, right? 
your tenant base isn't a lot of people with bachelor's degrees, okay? As a matter of fact, I believe the best type of tenant in a C-grade neighborhood is probably a Section 8 tenant, right? Because C-grade tenants... Wow, they're manageable, right? It's not like F-class tenants where it's a fucking shit show and, like, everybody's running around with their heads cut off and, like, it's just so hard to manage, right? We don't deal with that when we're in C-grade, but what we do deal with is turnover, right? People move a lot more in the multifamily space in C-grade neighborhoods than they do in other spaces, right? You're dealing with people that may only be one or two uh, bad breaks away from not being able to pay rent, right? These are not your typical people that have like $10,000 in their savings account, right? These are paycheck to paycheck people. Car breaks down, that might be your rent money, right? So what I like to do to keep the investment more consistent, more stable, I like to go Section 8, right? That's what I think is best. Can we do cash? Yes. Do we do cash? Yes. But I, I'm just trying to Break it all down for you guys. Let you understand exactly what type of tenant you're getting, right? What I do, right, what I've done for the Cleveland market is I've graded all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale, right? I made this this article. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. It's on HoltonWise.com in the Tools and Resources section, right? I go over in depth every neighborhood in Cleveland, what me, what it means to me to be A, to be B, C, D, F, et cetera. I highly recommend you read that so we're on the same page. And as for the house itself, the numbers make sense, right? The numbers were great. The competition, if you want to take this down, you absolutely are going to have to pay 100 k but I want you to know what you're getting, right? You are going to be getting a 100-year-old property. And these are the photos that we are provided by the listing agent prior to them putting their two tenants in there, right? The rents I gave you, those are the actual rents. But what you have to understand, we're going to want to do an inspection report on this property, and I can just tell, just from the few photos supplied, that this was not ran by a landlord who did the highest quality work, right? There's definitely a few things that stick out to me, right? Some corners have been cut, okay? For instance, the walls, right? You could tell it was a landlord who cuts corners, tries to do things as cheap as possible because he did the trim and the wall the exact same color, right? Didn't spend the extra money, right, to do the trim a different color than the wall. At Holton Wise, we like to see this gray, this white. In addition, you see the floor? He didn't refinish those hardwoods, right? It would be more costly than what he did. What he did clearly is use deck paint, okay? Is it still rentable? Yes. Do we still have tenants in there? Yes. Going forward, do I think you should do a higher quality renovation whenever you do your next tenant turnover? Yes. Will you see more money on that rental income? Probably not. Seven fifty, right? We're getting seven fifty seven and a quarter. Seven fifty is about top of the market for these types of properties, but You'll get the highest quality tenants if you provide the highest quality product, right? Another thing to look out for, all right, that's probably going to get brought up on your inspection report as we cruise through the rest. The kitchen here, right? He obviously had some type of electrical problem. And instead of actually opening up the wall, he took the cheap route again and did the piping on the outside of the wall. Is that in itself a reason not to buy the property? No, but I'm just giving you my insight on just a few pictures that I've seen. You can tell this particular landlord has taken shortcuts, right? So here's another one. You have the electrical on the outside of the wall. Another one as well, right? So when you get back this inspection report, I there's a third one, right? I do not want you to like anticipate this property being perfect turnkey condition, right? If it was, it would probably be able to be sold for around 115, 120 right now, right? So with all of that though, right? It is still valued at approximately 100k. You're still going to have to compete with other investors to buy it, right? I get a lot of times investors they see a property like this, right? We put it on our contract at 100k. They get the inspection report, and the inspector is going to tell you some of the same stuff I just told you. My my clients, they're new to the market. They're like, ah, it's going to cost X amount to fix the things that you just mentioned, James. So let's take that off the price. Let's go back down to 90k now. No, bro. It's a 100-year-old house. You're not going to get an inspection report that says it's perfect. I'm telling you with the deficiencies that I just highlighted for you, that's what it's worth. It's worth 100 k So if you're comfortable with that, 
Let's make a move. If not, that's totally cool. Let me know your thoughts, and we can adjust your criteria on the next videos going forward. If you'd like to see something in a little bit better condition, we can do that. But of course, you're going to need to increase your budget. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.